Today we're demonstrating Visual Crossing Location Analytics for SAC. This comes in two parts. One story is dedicated to the designer, which will help you create a model for distance and attraction of your locations versus your competitors. The second portion is a story that is a dashboard that helps you take the results from that analysis and compare and contrast them to other analysis you might be doing internally and apply some of the measures that you have, such as revenue, to those results. Let's get started by clicking over to Main Analysis. Main Analysis will first ask us to log in. We'll go ahead and log in as an administrator. However, you can go ahead and create a free trial for yourself and log in with those credentials. Upon first login, we will see that the demo data is loaded for us. In the upper left, we can see that we were loading 10 locations, which will represent our stores, and five of our competitors. On the map, we can see the locations of our stores in green and the competitors in red. A probability map is drawn immediately. And this probability map basically map represents the ability for any population in any area and the likelihood that they'll go to our, one of our stores based upon where they're located and the attraction of the store. As we move the mouse around, you can see the live locator will tell us for any pinpoint the, basically the probability of that someone in that location going to one of our locations. If we're in the blue area, we'll see that the probability is very high. If we're in the red, it's extremely low and all of the variations in between. This is very helpful in isolating where we might want to add our new location. Looking at the analysis that we're doing, you can see that we're doing it on general population. However, Visual Crossing allows you to choose from one of many demographics in your area. So you can isolate independent races or males, females, or anything from college graduates and to household income. This is useful if your particular business has an isolation on a particular demographic that you'd like to accomplish. We can also change the distance by which one of our locations can reach. In this case, we will change it to 10. Now, the probability map is redrawn, and it's redrawn with each of the locations reaching out as far as 10 miles instead of just 5. And it will draw an entirely new probability map based upon that. The graph shows us exactly how much of the population is likely to go to our location versus our competitors. As we can see in this area, we're already doing quite well. But we have tools here that can help us do even better. One such tool is the ability to add a proposed site. So let's say we wanted to add a new location in this area and we want to maximize its probability of attracting additional customers. We'll go ahead and click Add Proposed Site. And from the pop-up, we can see that it offers us many different ways in which we could add in probable new locations. Some of them would be a list maybe from a real estate site. Um, others could be manual, and we'll choose that option for now. We'll just manually add a location. We could either enter in a specific address, or in this case, we'll just click. And we're going to choose a site that's very close to one of our competitors. In fact, looks like it has the largest area of population that it's pulling in. Once we click on that location, it'll reverse geocode and tell us the address, and it'll give us a chance to enter in attraction. Now, attraction is a measure that you will create yourself for each of your locations depending on your competitive analysis. Our tool basically will take the attractions and offer you the average. But since it's going to be a bright new store, we're going to enter in 8, which is slightly higher than the average. Once we add the new location, the system again will recalculate. Not only will it create one map, but it will create two. It will create a before and an after, so it can tell us the results of the new location. On the map, it will draw a star, and it will redraw the probability map, as we mentioned, and it will tell us what kind of effects it has. If we look at the graph, we can easily see that we can increase by as much as 5%, and we could decrease our competitors by as much as 13% by adding a store in that location. Again, we can add multiple here um, to find out different scenarios. Um, or we can go ahead and look at the results. Before we move on though, there are multiple different uses for this location analytics tool. If you don't have competitors, you can run a cannibalization analysis that is very similar to the map you see below that allows you to compare and contrast your sites and see how they're affecting each other. And we could also just run a generic 
heat map on the population to see where are those target rich areas that I should be placing my location. In this case, we're going strictly for a competitive move and trying to take market share from a competitor. But if we're looking for new customers, using the target rich areas map can help us isolate a location that would be best to pick up the, the maximum number of new customers. Now, once we have this data exported, we can go over to the second portion of the SAP Analytics Location Analysis tool, which is another dashboard. And we can switch over to the overview tab of that dashboard, where we can basically see the overview of the entire analysis that we did. How much population is attracted to my location? How much population is attracted to my competitors? Not only will it show you on a store-by-store -store basis, but it also has a little bit of what-if scenarios in here. We can say, how much revenue do we think we can get per population? And we could also say, what was the penetration in those areas of population? Because not every customer that we see underneath the population area is going to go to our location. Once we have those variables in, we can make estimates on how much revenue we will have from the current setup of our battleground. In the bottom here, we can actually see relative to our competitors how much market share we own. A more advanced feature is the comparison tab. Its sole job is to tell you about the before and after effects of our new location. In this instance, the location will have as much of a 13% positive effect on our population attraction and negative 13% on our competitors. We can see that FastMart, our competitor, particularly FastMart 2, where we place the location closest to, would have the most devastating impacts on. It does have impacts on all of our stores in a cannibalization analysis. So we have to weigh carefully whether the change is worth it. Is it worth it overall? We can determine from the cannibalization summary. And we can see that it clearly does have a beneficial impact overall to us. It will have negative impacts on some, ne negative impacts on us, but also positive impacts that we can um, determine if, it, if the overall value and the cost of creating that new location is worth it. And finally, we can analyze by location. Since we're doing a distance attraction model, we know exactly where the populations are coming from. For instance, if we click on QuickMark 10 to isolate it, we can see that QuickMark 10 has very close location of customers. And so it doesn't have to reach out very far and doesn't have to market very far to attract those customers. However, the profile of our QuickMark 2 store is much different. And we can see from the bubbles that it is attracting customers from much further away. This can also help us understand not only the marketing plan for these locations, but when we choose locations in the future, how close do we want to be to population centers to attract the, the most amount of clients and gain the most revenue? Thank you for watching.